expecting them to do the right thing is just not going to happen. Um, I mean, for example, when, when you were racing, it, it would have been seen as one of the times when it was, you know, there was horrendous kind of um, abuse of drugs. I mean, how difficult did that make it for you racing? Uh, and did you ever think that maybe, maybe as you mentioned, like if, if I did the drugs, I'd win the Tour de France, not just finish short and look at someone who might have been doing something. Was there ever a temptation there for you to do that? Oh yeah, they, they were definitely offered to me when I was racing. I mean, I my example has always used to be when I first started, I was, um, you know, first, second, third year rider and I was beating Jeannie Longo. And not all the time, but it was a fair fight. We would go back and forth in the general classification. I'd win a race, she'd win a race. Wait, wait, Inga, tell, tell, first tell our listeners, some people who already know this, who Jeannie Longo is. This is someone who was put into the Hall of Fame for the Tour de France last year. So just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, here she yeah. is. You know. Longo is arguably one of the most decorated women athletes out there, up with, you know, Voss or um, Annemiek van Vluten. Um, what close to 50 national championships, maybe five Olympics, you know, I've, I've only got three Olympics and 10 national championships. Um, but I mean, that shows you how dominant Longo was, and she was already an exceptional rider up until the point of 1987. Like I said, I called it, it was a fair fight. It made women's racing fun to watch because we had this I'd win one, she'd win one. And then when she started taking EPO or steroids, whatever her cocktails were at that point, I couldn't touch her. I mean, I used to be able to out-climb her, um, solidly out-climb her, and I, she'd put 10, 15 minutes on me in a climb. And ultimately, it, it's devastating. You have this attitude of, why bother? why bother if it's not a fair playing field? And it's one of the reasons that I quit the sport was I am putting my heart and soul into this to continually get second or third. And this is one of the reasons I'm standing up for the women racing right now is because when we look at Tour of Gila, we see women putting their heart and soul into it to get second or third. And women we, we're like men we're competitive we're not there just to like go give each other hugs and high five and have fun we're competitive we want to win and i mean maybe not all women are like that but not all men are like that either and we deserve that fair we we deserve fair opportunities do, do you think that i, I just straight because i'm gonna i've a couple more questions isla's gonna jump in um do you think that, uh, just being direct, do you think that that experience that you saw, which I'll also say for listeners who might not know, Greg LeMond also had the same experience, and he spoke about it. When he suddenly saw these guys on EPO, it was EPO, it was, I think it was his. Yeah. When suddenly, they, he just, I can't keep up with them. Now, regardless if he was doing something or not, he recognized that suddenly they were supercharged. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you do that? I mean, and, and, and I've spoken to people about this before, and, and some of the stuff you, they take, it, it's phenomenal. Recovery times are so short, and you, you become a better athlete, a very human in that sense. Do you think possibly, just in, in this sense, that, that your experience of this, of being this kind of feeling of being cheated, you didn't say cheated, but I, I'm, they're my words, but do you feel that this could maybe cloud your vision of the situation now? Um, or do you think that it doesn't matter because it, it, it's kind of the same elements uh, crossing over between the two? Um, when you say cloud my vision, I would almost say that it gives me more clarity of how it feels. When you have, you know, a trans identifying male step in and let me back up here a little bit. There's a reason why they ban athletes after they've been caught taking testosterone because it takes you up to a level that you never could have gotten naturally. And then when you go off the testosterone, you come down a little bit, but you still have, you're, you're still way better than you ever used to be because the testosterone allowed you to train so much harder. So now you have a man coming in whose body has been bathed in the testosterone his whole life. 
there's no bringing that person down from that level to be with the women. I mean, the, the mitochondria, they, they utilize their fuels better. Their lungs are bigger. Their heart is bigger. I mean, everything there, there's no mitigating that there's no, there's no uncooking the egg. Yeah. Um, Do you think you could, I mean, I, 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 I'm with on this and, and people who spoke before would also agree on this. And we kind of, when we, we, we spoke, we've always said it, when people being lumped in together to one big kind of group of monoblock, as I always call it. Um, do you think that we, should, we need to, first of all, look at this really bad, badly drawn up and drawn up in a hurry, and also that there's going to be a lot coming out of it as well in the future, this 2016 document from the IOC that has just messed, messed things up completely, where you have transgender um, women, uh, as in Austin Killips and, of course, Leah Thomas, competing. Do you think that, it, it, and it, what I'm trying to say is that, that there's a difference between transitioned and transgender. So transitioned, um, it's, a, it's a completely different, it's a different uh, situation. Do you think that, you know, if they took five Physiologically, years, it's completely Physiologically, yeah, sorry, yeah. If, if, Inge, if they take five years off after a full transition, would that help? Would that make sense? Or is it still kind of just going around the same circle? It's, we're still going around the same circle. One of the studies that I read that even after 14 years of testosterone suppression, it hasn't mitigated the advantage. But back to you can't uncook the, the egg. You can't, a woman can never compete against a male body that has gone through a lifetime of testosterone, which is why with when uh, World Athletics did the um, they had to have started suppression or testosterone suppression before they went through puberty. I can kind of see that, um, you know, but testosterone, the, 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 the male body gets bathed in testosterone in the womb and small surges before puberty. And then when they hit puberty, they have the final surge. And so that's an area that I'm not going to speculate in. I can just, you know, kind of quote the science here. Mm -hmm. um, but once you hit puberty, yeah, they, they at least, International Cycling Union at least has to go to what World Athletics did. And then the rest of that argument could potentially be sorted out later. Okay. 